And we're about to learn the more of the truth. We must first know who we are and what drove my forebears to commit such an atrocity. This tapestry is our story, the one that brought us here. After generations of wandering, my people sought refuge in Northeastern Storm some 170 years ago. But in exchange for our safety, the Gregorian Church demanded we renounce our faith and branded us heretics when we could not. To be exterminated as a lesson to others. And so was it chronicled in the Imperial Histories anything less would have made the church seem weak yet a handful survived the few who did fled north and west and in doing so discovered two things that would forever shape our fates the first was an old legend revealing how to make your very own mother crystal mm. i've heard that one before yes yet it gave them new hope however false our ancestors convinced themselves that they could recreate the divine if they could only find a strong enough heart. A living being capable of channeling torrents of ether. And the heavens provided. A dominant warriors. They'd stumbled across a nostrum in an ancient ruin, which they believed could provoke a sudden outpouring of a creature's ether. They meant to enrage his icon. Leviathan would have destroyed everything had our people not made their second important discovery. A means to stop time itself. Where did they find that? The Northerners had no such magic, so they would have used them. When our ancestors first arrived, the land was uninhabited, save for an old witch who lived on the highest peak. Her body had been consumed by the curse, a cruel payment for her long years of service to the Northern Thanes. So desperate were they to prevent the fall of Drake's eye, they'd forced her to devise a spell to stop time. But Drake's eye did fall. It did. When she finally perfected the necessary magics, it was already too late. As punishment for her failure, the Thanes exiled her to this forsaken place to live out the few days she had left. Knowing her suffering, our ancestors cared for her as best they could, and in return, she gifted them her spell. That even though she should die, her legacy might live on. So armed with both the knowledge of the ancients and the secrets of time, our ancestors settled upon an ambitious plan. They would create a new Mother Crystal and enchant it that it might endure for all eternity. Thus would our people's wandering, our suffering, finally end and prosperity visit us once more. And all it would require was the sacrifice of a single child. A small price to pay, or so they believed. Another victim of man's blind reliance on the Mother Crystals. So we know the seal source. How do we break it and restore the flow of time? Do you recall the Dome of Light on top of the cliffs to the west? Inside lie the ruins of an old temple. It was there that the witch built the Vare, a conduit of sorts that channels her remaining ether into the surge. But it's been a long time since anyone set foot in the place, as their own. Then we shall go prepared for a fight. That said, it may be best if one of us stays behind. You think the village could be in danger? We saw the ether flow from Wallius in all directions, but only encountered a single familiar. There will be more. And should even one make its way here, I doubt the walls could hold it back for long. Then I shall stay. 
The Phoenix will see your people safe, Tributary. You have my thanks. Very well. We should depart at once. I fear time may no longer be a luxury Cheap we can afford. viewers. I don't want to buy viewers, I want to earn it. Hmm. The Vare is not easy to find. We must first head north and then west, deeper into the forest. I said finish. Side quests, I keep getting more. My lord, may I? There is a matter with which I would beg your aid. Of course, what is it? Please, not so loud. Something serious, then? Yes. I think we might have company. I was passing by the low gate when I saw a figure moving among the trees upon the cloak. At first, I thought it must have been you or your brother, so I didn't say anything, but... But the more I think about it, the more certain I am that the figure looked... familiar. And you're sure it wasn't one of the other villagers? Positive. I think it was someone from outside the wall who has found his way inside. Of course, it could just be my imagination playing tricks on me. I only caught a fleeting glimpse, and it might have been you or your brother. But if it is who I think it is, we cannot allow him to leave now that he knows we're here. Would you go and see? Oh, he won't try to hurt you, believe me. Given what lurks in the forest, the only one likely to get hurt is him. Very well. Whether the man you saw is who you believe him to be or not, we need to know. It may yet be someone else entirely. Someone who means your people, or my people harm. Perhaps. Just promise me that if you do find someone up there... Don't worry. I won't draw my sword unless I need to. Thank you. Yamila, this man you saw, might he be the customer you told me of? I fear so. A customer? I'll explain later. Come on. Just try to breathe. That's it. Is everything all right? Ah, you're the outsider. I'm Fanit, healer by trade. And this is Talor, one of my patients. He took ill not long after you arrived. Nothing too serious, I hope. I hope so too, but... But? This affliction, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. He complains of feeling chilled to the bone, but there's no fever to go with it. And my most powerful Antalgic hasn't done a thing to ease the pain in his chest. I'm starting to wonder if his condition might require a different kind of treatment altogether. Shula said that you were here to help us. You couldn't help me, could you? <laughs> All I need you to do is speak to Talor's son, Pavat, over at the forge, and ask if he knows what his father was up to before he came down sick. Something must have caused this, and I want to find out what. The trouble is, Talor's too weak to speak, and I can't leave his side for long. So while you talk to Pavat, I'll pay his wife word a quick visit, just in case she knows anything. All right. Oh, uh, do you need something? I do, though not from the Forge. Fanit asked me to speak with you. She's looking into the cause of your father's illness and wondered if you could shed any light on the matter. I see. Sorry, she shouldn't have dragged you into this. It's no trouble, really. Tell me, did your father do anything out of the ordinary before he fell ill? 
Not that I know of. But then I hardly see him. He's always out and about, like. Well, at least he was. Suppose he might have been a bit more... fidgety than usual, but apart from that... When you say out and about, where does he usually go? Just round the village. Wanders over to Blazia's place most days. He's a fisher who lives on the other side of the fount. They're all friends. Maybe he knows something I don't. <clears throat> Maybe. I'll go and speak with him. Oh no! Ty, take me! What am I gonna do? You! You've got to help me! Shula said you were a force to be reckoned with, are you? Uh, why do you ask? Hey? Oh, sorry. I should explain. My name's Kitav. I'm worried about a friend of mine. He went into the forest and he hasn't come back. Would you help me find him? I can try. Tell me what I need to know. Of course. Uh... You know about the glamour our ancestors cast to keep this place hidden, right? Shula told us about it, yes. Right. So you know the cairns we use to maintain the spell? Well, it's me and my friend's job to maintain them. If it weren't for the likes of us, it would have faded years ago. So your friend went into the forest to visit one of these cairns? Aye, that's right. He said he was going down to Father's Fell. There are two cairns out that way, one by the banks of the Swift Run, and another near the Winged Wains, the, uh, ships in the forest. All right. How will I know this friend of yours? His name's Nasef. He's about my height, but clean-shaven. If you could track him down and see that he's come to no harm, I'd be much obliged. I'll search the village, just in case anyone's seen him, and meet you back here. Very well. by the ships, another by the river. Better get moving. Hales? Are you a rider by any chance? I am. What gave me away? Oh, I can smell it on you. The scent of the stables. And not just any stables. Something tells me you've never been one to ride half-starved birds with chine gall and wet beak. If I had a guess, I'd say your bird eats only the finest greens and has our feathers groomed twice a day with a curl hairbrush. <laughs> Nothing but the best for my Ambrosia. Ambrosia, eh? Pretty name. What's she like? Well, she's tall and strong. And her feathers are as white as snow. You're joking. You've got a white chocobo. I have, yes. I suppose they are rather rare. This I've got to see. Can you bring her here? I would if I could, but I doubt Shula's skiff could hold her. Me dad's got a boat, and he's very chocobos before. You could get him to bring her. It'd be perfect timing and all. He's preparing for a trip beyond the wall as we speak. I'm sure he'd help you if you asked. He would. Well, I don't suppose it would hurt to have Ambrosia around? All right then. Where could I find your father? He'll be in the storehouse on the other side of the brook. Tell him Manda sent you. It's cute seeing the chocobo eat the grass. <clears throat> You're one of the outsiders, then? I am. Shula invited me. The Umanda's father. I am. <laughs> Got you running errands for her already, has she? She's asked to see my chocobo, but I need your help and your boat to bring her here. <sighs> or you could just say no. Honestly, that girl and her birds shall be growing feathers soon enough. Well, truth be told, I didn't take the idea seriously at first. But thinking about it, it would make it easier to get around if I had Ambrosia here. Can you help? Well, if you're sure that's what you want. The tributary says where to treat you lot as we would each other. 
So, if you need me to ferry your bird over, then that's what I'll do. Still, they don't take the water easily. I'll need you to bring us a mimic gourd or two to keep her calm on the journey over. And uh, where would I find one of those? Well, I don't ask me. It's been years since I last brought a chocobo across the bay, and I'm told the world's changed a fair bit since then. Where do you usually get your stable supplies from? Well, the man who made Ambrosius Tack lived in Martha's Rest, and if I remember correctly, he traded in Chocobo feed too. So I suppose I'll go and ask him. I'll be sailing over to Northreach soon to pick up some supplies. <coughs> when I do that, you collect your bird and your gourd, and then meet me by the shore. Just don't take too long, all right? Greetings, stranger. What can I do for you? Your name is Blazir, is it not? Pavard tells me you're a friend of his father's, and that the two of you may have spent some time together prior to his illness. His illness? Talor's never been ill a day in his life. I don't know why he'd start now. Oh, Fanny doesn't know either. It was she who asked me to look into his recent behavior on the... Off chance it might explain how his condition arose. Oh, uh, uh, suppose there was something that struck me as a bit odd. He kept asking about the woods. Did you see anything strange on your way back from the shore? Are you certain? Do you swear? That kind of thing. I didn't, of course. But he wouldn't let it go. It was like he was expecting something to happen. It was just a matter of when. Not that I know what, but he never told me anyway. Well, that certainly does sound unusual. And it might just be what Fanet is looking for. Thank you. I don't mention it. <coughs> but, and when you say to law, wish him the best from me, eh? Let's see what the healer makes of this. I spoke with word, but she couldn't tell me anything. Did you have any better luck? Nothing conclusive. But there was one thing. Vizier, the fisherman, told me that Talor had taken a sudden interest in the forest of late. He kept asking him if he'd seen anything unusual there on his way back from the coast, but never let on what exactly he was expecting him to have seen. The forest between here and the coast. Surely. Then... But... then... I can't say for sure. But I think Talor's illness might have some connection to the Tombreys. Mm. You may have encountered them during your time here. Still <coughs> scaly beastmen. And you think they may have caused Talor's illness? I do. At least in a way. And if I'm right, it's no wonder the treatments I've been trying didn't work. Oh, I know it's a lot to ask, but would you go down into Father's Fell for me? There's an altar there, and if my fears are true, an offering upon it. <sighs> what is going on here? Please, I'll explain everything when you return, but time flows fast. I beg you, make use of Father's Fell and take the offering from the altar. Talor's life may depend on it. Very well. Breath of the Arbor. Perfume from Saint Bragg. Looks expensive, too. Who's there? Stop! Ah! No! No! Hang on! I'm coming! Don't eat me! I'll give you gut rot, I swear! Stand back. I'll have this. Are you alright? I'm more than alright! I'm saved! Oh, I could kiss you! Maybe you should introduce yourself first. 
Mm. Hervey! I knew it was you! What are you doing here? I came to see you. Oh, my little canary, it's been so long. Thank you for saving him and sparing him. Who is he? Hervey. One of many clients from my employment beyond the wall. One of many clients? We spoke every night of our plans together. Whispered songs of love into each other's ears. And then you upped and vanished without so much as a word. I left you a note, didn't I? I told you I was sorry, but that we could never be together. That I could never abandon my family. And I told you not to look for me. How did you even find this place, anyway? The flame of your love was as a beacon in the night that guided me to you. Oh, so it's gonna be like this. Uh, I was walking by the coast near Northreach when I saw a lady who looked like you. Eyes like the ocean. Hair like the driven snow. The next moment, she and her companions were jumping in a skiff and sailing out towards the wave. So I, uh, borrowed the nearest boat and started rowing. It must have been Shula bringing us here. So, so what? You rowed, found a nose how many leagues across the bay, simply because you saw a woman with white hair. And as I did, the skies changed from a dull and hopeless grey to a bright and benevolent blue. You are it quite flamboyant. You for certain that my little canary was close. Oh, why did you come? You should have forgotten me as I tried to forget you. I cannot leave my people, Hervey. And now that you know about this place, neither can you. We must return to Haven and accept my family's judgment. I'm to meet your family. Oh, my little canary. I don't think you should be happy right now. Please, come and see me later. You did as I asked, and you must be rewarded for it. But first, follow me, Hervey. I really just want to smack him with the flat end of my sword. <laughs> right on top of the head. <laughs> Good lord. I never have found this place. How could I be so careless? Don't blame yourself. I doubt anything could have kept that man away. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. You two met at the Vale, I take it. When I worked there, yes. To earn the coin that my people need to survive. Though Mycidia is our sanctuary, there are certain necessities that it cannot provide. And for that reason, some of us seek employment beyond the wall. Yet few are the opportunities for followers of a strange faith in a strange land. And so you supported your family as best you could? I did. And I have never regretted it for a moment. I found a second family in the Vale. And in the Dame, a second mother. I also found Hervey. But our love could never be. I knew that if I revealed my secret to him, I would be putting my people in danger. But that if I did not, I would be living a lie, unable to return home. What will happen to him now? Since our people settled in Mesidia, uninvited visitors have been few and far between. But not unknown. Explorers, survivors of shipwrecks, none lasted long. I see. 
That was before my time, you understand? I've never had to make a decision like this before. Yamila, know that I do not blame you for any of this. It was me who decided to make the trip to shore. Me who exposed our secret. This was my mistake, and I shall bear the responsibility. Thank you, tributary. I only hope... I only beg you to remember that Hervé means us no ill will. He's just a fool. A fool who loves me. I will take that into consideration. But yours is not the only voice I must listen to. The whole family must be consulted. And it may take time for me to arrive at my decision. I hope you understand. Of course, tributary. However long it takes. Come what may, I thank you, my lord, <clears throat> for bringing us back together. Before, we turned east of the shipwrecks to reach the coast. Now, we must head in the opposite direction. Left it is, then. If there's one thing I know about beastmen, is that they love to hide in the dark. What are they up to? Some sort of ritual. Sorry to disturb you. Super Soaker. <laughs> oh, you don't see the PlayStation achievement? That sucks. Let's see what's on this altar then. Silver chain. I doubt the Tombrys made it. This must be what Fennet was talking about. Well, here's the can. But no sign of Nasef. To the riverbank then. Here. I'm looking for a man named Nasef. Hi, I know him. Takes care of the cans. Wait, you didn't think I was him, did you? Sorry, mate, I'm just out to gym me sell a few ibexes. What do you want with the lad, anyway? Uh, his friend, Katav, asked me to look for him. And didn't return. Well, that is a worry. You're a hunter, yes. You must know the woods as well as anyone. Can you think where he might have gone? Uh, there's a bridge further down the path. Blasted thing got washed away a few moons back. Our carpenter only recently had time to rebuild it. But if I remember rightly, there is another cairn on the far side. Maybe he decided to visit that one while he was here. Maybe... It's worth a look, certainly. Thank you. Don't mention it. I'll keep an eye out, too. Perhaps he just got delayed or something. Let's hope so. This must be the bridge the hunter was talking about. Hold on! Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm the tributary's guest. 
And you must be Nasef. I am. But how do you know that? Your friend Katav asked me to look for you when you didn't return. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. I was so focused on attuning the cairn, I didn't see those creatures come until it was too late. How exactly do they work? Oh, that there are crystals inside. They're what keeps the glamour going. Should the ether cease to flow through too many of them, our shroud would quickly unravel. It's my job to make sure that doesn't happen. And an important job it is. But you'll struggle to do it if you're dead. You need to take more care. Yeah, no arguments there. The yes. truth is, hmm. me and Katar usually work together, watching each other's backs like. But when we heard outsiders were coming, we split up to get the job done faster, so things would be perfect for your arrival. <sighs> Stupid, I know. So you found him then? Not before the local fauna did. My arrival seemed to put them off their dinner. <laughs> Mustn't have been hungry after all. Expect you'll be wanting someone to escort you back to the village then, Nasef. Woods are full of nasties today. When you're next in Haven, be sure to come and see us. You saved my life. It's only right I repair you. If you insist. Take care now. Thank you. Nasef told me everything. If you hadn't got there when you did... Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. All that matters is that you're safe. Far be it from me to tell you how to do your jobs, but... Don't go alone again. Or if we have to, maybe we should think about casting the glamour on ourselves to keep the wildlife from spotting us. It'd take its toll, of course. But it'd beat letting the cairns fall and having to weave the entire spell from scratch. Imagine if we had to do that. <laughs> I'd rather not. We'd only succeed in adding two new piles of stone to the collection. Your bearers? That we are, thank the tides. The others can't attune to the crystals in the cairns the same way we can. Reckon this place would be doomed without us. <laughs> so... You do this work for the good of your people? Not because... We're forced to. No. From what I've heard of the way things work on the outside, we were truly blessed that our rain fell here in Mysidia. Our people are few enough as it is. If we started turning on each other, kin against kin, over nothing but a stupid accident of birth, our days would be numbered. They would. Anyway, all's well that ends well, eh? Thanks to you, both of us live to keep this place hidden another day. You're back? Well, did you find anything? I did. This silver chain. Oh, I knew it! Well, I'm still none the wiser. Forgive me. This chain. It's a Gregorian Matanoster. Worn by men of the faith. What's it doing here? And why would the Tombrys be praying to it? To understand that, you need to understand what the Tombrys are. They feed on hatred and suffering. And some say that if you render them an offering, some token of grievance against your fellow man, they will put a curse upon him. So you think someone's put a Tombri curse on Talor? I... Oh, I can't say for sure. Truth be told, I always assumed it was an old wives' tale. But given his fear of the forest and the presence of the chain on the altar, I, I don't know what else to think. Does Talor have any enemies in the village? Anyone who would nurse such a grudge? No. No, I believe the one who left the chain at the altar was... Talor himself. I beg your pardon? But there's more to the tale, you see. 
It's said that if you attempt to curse a soul that has returned to the sea already, your ire has nowhere to go but back to its source. You're saying he cursed himself? In trying to curse another, I. When my father was younger, he was one of the few permitted to venture beyond the wall on trading expeditions. He told us that when he journeyed to Sandbreck, he'd wear that chain to disguise his true chim in his deception. Might that explain the ill will he bears someone? Not that he ever told me. Come now. Let's not waste time speculating about Talor's past. We need to focus on the present, and that means finding a way to break the curse. All right. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Thank you. I shall. <coughs> Aye, and thanks for going to all this trouble. Here, it's not much, but I, I want you to have this. We call it an adder storm. It's a gatherer's charm. Reacts to certain rare minerals we use in crafting. Makes them ring out like a bell. Stuff you'd have no chance of spotting otherwise. If you find anything, see that you bring it back to me. I can make you some decent gear with it. If you're interested, like. I am, thank you. And I'll be sure to pay you a visit. Until then, I wish your father a swift recovery. I remember you. You're the one who saved Whiteheart. How's the old girl doing? She's very well. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. You're the one who saved her. I could find one. Oh, reckon I could do better than that. Just so happens, I've got a whole carload of the blasted things. Not a buyer in sight. Really? Aye, you'd be doing me a favor taking a few off my hands before they turn to mush. Just be on the lookout for wild birds, eh? You don't want them chasing after you like they did me. <laughs> I will. And thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Any friend of Whiteheart is a friend of mine. <laughs> and in times like these, friends have got to stick together. We certainly do. Mm. Oh. I wish then. We want to keep Ender's father waiting. Ah, there you are. And this must be... Ambrosia, was it? Oh, she's a real beauty, isn't she? I have the mimic or two. Here. That's a pumpkin? Okay. Hmm. Thank you kindly. Soon as she's gobbled this up, we'll set sail. We're going to take a little trip across the bay now, Ambrosia. Don't worry. You'll be alright. You did and all. <laughs> she is as white as snow. You're beautiful, aren't you, girl? Brave, too. She was calm as you like on the journey over. The mimic gourd will have played its part, of course, but passing through the walls enough to spook most birds even then. Not this one, though. Ambrosia's been through a lot. I doubt there's much that could unnerve her now. Not with a beloved master by her side. No. It's you who looks after me, isn't it, girl? Anyway, <laughs> thanks for bringing her here. I hope I can breed a bird like her someday. And if you and Ambrosia need ferrying back to Northreach, you only need say the word. Thank you. I think we might explore Mysidia together. What do you say, Ambrosia? There's a large gate up ahead, and beyond it, a cluster of ancient ruins. The temple, 
or the air of hours as my people call it, can only be reached by passing through them. The forest is crawling with life, most of it hungry, which is why we make sure this gate stays shut. And why you carry that impressive looking axe, I presume? <laughs> Noticed her, have you? The temple is up there. Don't worry. Those cliffs aren't the only way to the top. Or droplet. This is the mineral Pavar was talking about. The one that rings out like a bell. That eh, sounds like a droplet to me. Are these the ruins? Yes. As far as we can tell, they're part of the same complex as the temple itself. To think of all the people who must once have lived here. Seems like it isn't only Haven's blacksmith that has an appetite for these things. These remind me of home. You're from the north, then? Yes. And no. Do you see that cave up ahead? Whoever lived here carved a flight of stairs into the stone within. Away to the top. And whatever it is that awaits us there. <sighs> there. The temple that time forgot. Inside. Yes. You can see the spell's path from the nave. What is it? I... I don't know. It's probably nothing. Well, usually in setups like this, it's usually nothing. Forgive me, but why build the Vare here? The spell was originally meant to be cast on Drake's eye, and this was the only place with an unbroken line of sight. The top breeze like to think these ruins are their own. And they look none too pleased to see us. While our numbers dwindle, theirs seem only to increase. As if they were feeding off our suffering. That's a big tornberry. Could this be their leader? You're more than welcome to us. taught me anything is that there's always something worse boss fight at the nave just inside the dome yes but it's what's out here that worries me oh and there I was okay. thinking they'd all migrated south the weaker ones did the weaker ones. Did you hear that, Sid? Nice try. Ow. 
I suck. What's wrong with its skin? You don't want to be around to find out. Get back. Fucker. Sister's sins. Shall we? The blue veil shows the extent of the spell's reach. But I can feel its ether from here. Shula. Wait. Before we cross the threshold, I'd like to know a little more about how these magics work. I assume we'll be safe from their influence. We won't grind to a halt, if that's what you mean. The spell only affects the things that were present at the moment it was cast. Leviathan's doing. Well, it certainly wasn't ours. When he realized my ancestors were attempting to cast a spell from here, he made to destroy the temple. And almost did by the looks of it. This music, holy crap. Add some rain to the background and I fall asleep. similar in my father's keep. The priests would deliver their sermons from the dais. Your father? That's cool how that's frozen this place. Someone turned into guts for a second there. The path is clear. One last climb, then. The fair. By the founder. It's 
just as I thought. Jill, does this ether not feel somehow... Familiar, yes. I sensed it the moment we arrived, though I wasn't sure until now. You can feel it too, can't you, Clive? She's calling us. You don't mean... the witch? I do. Though, she was more than that. Much more. She was a dominant. A dominant who once commanded the icon that now resides in both me and Clive. Shiva. Of course. Mm. I don't know why I didn't see it. Who else would have the power to freeze time? None other than Shiva herself. But for her ether to endure after all these years, it, it's almost as if Oh? As if she shared it with another, just as Torgal shared in my ice. Is it fair that I'm thinking of Golbez? Yeah, I'm thinking of Golbez. Someone call for hammer time? I think that's what he just did. That's not cool. That's really not cool. Ow. I mean, it's cool, but not cool that it's being used on me.
Fucker! Is that the whole field? Holy shit! There's nowhere near that, damn it. Are you done?
fucking hell! Seriously. Did you ever stop to wonder what might happen to the tidal surge if I unraveled the whole spell at once? I didn't think so. This is going to require a bit more finesse. From wind and light, water and earth, let the silent pour of my ice. So, the thread connecting this place to the child should be broken. Meaning Walias should finally be... Oh, why is time stopped? Free once more. Lord oh. Our most profaned fragment. Its divinity defiled by the hand of man. I did not know you were going to be here, buddy. By his hubris, till Mythos came, bringing reliefs. Now, let the sins of man be redeemed by the hand of the servant of God. You're telling me I gotta kill a child. You should head back to the village. And get everyone to higher ground. As for the rest. The rest the freed will handle.
years of imprisonment. I'd be angry too. But I can't let it end like this, Wallius. It's time for you to come home. I hope we get to bring him home. I don't want to kill a baby. A baby who's yet to even take his first step. Say his first words. <laughs> I still need to just imagine, you know, Clive playing the role of Big Brother. <laughs> that wouldn't be quite adorable. I just see Leviathan's face pop up there. Oh, well, there's Leviathan. This isn't what I wanted. I only hope you can forgive me. I'm gonna have to kill a baby. Ah, oh, god damn it. Jaws.
Ow. Jesus, the health on this thing. Oh crap, wrong button.
Ow. Oh, fuck you! Oh, come on! Okay. Oh, first game over I've ever had, I think. How far back is he gonna set me? All the way to this phase. I've walked right into it like a fucking idiot.
side, Leviathan. Oh my god, is it really? Stop this! I'm not here to play. Please tell me it is. Maybe not, I don't think it is. The sea rises. I'm not gonna make it. Shit. Oh, we get to see this attack. Oh god, how do I survive it? Oh, it didn't matter. How was I supposed to stop it? <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Oh, this time. Oh shit! How was I supposed to avoid that? Fucking hell.
How do I get out of this? Oh god! I'm broadcasting right now, what? Oh, damn it. I have no idea what I was supposed to do there when I got distracted. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. Like, seriously, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And I wasn't fully dead, by the way. Okay, that does nothing. No, give me that fucking... Oh, well, I survived. Something tells me I was supposed to use Broomstone. Fuck! Task, survive the onslaught. Damn! This is bullshit. Are you fucking kidding me? The fuck? Oh. <sighs> Well, I'm on the right track! Oh my god, I fucking hate this shit! Oh my god, piss off! <sighs> I'm getting pissed. Nope, 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 nope! Oh my god, did I make it? Did I avoid it? Holy shit, okay. Fuck you. I didn't get away from that.
What am I supposed to do? Don't, don't do this to me. Oh, thank God. Oh. Control burn. You've had your fun to life. This time, you wait a minute. That was badass, but damn, did Leviathan piss me off. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> oh, fuck. So tiny. Now that was quite a tantrum. Clive, where is he? Well, yes. Yeah, he killed me several times. I don't know how to thank you. It's all right. We should find him a dry blanket, though. Wouldn't want the little monster catching a cold. <laughs> the tantrum he says yeah that was quite the tantrum Ugh. died six times in that one battle alone Miyazaki would be proud of Yoshi damn Asleep. The poor 
poor thing had a long day. That makes two of us. So, what happens now? Now? Now, we make things right. How? By providing Walias what he was denied. A place to learn and grow. A family to love and protect him. So that one day, when the wounds in his heart and mind have finally healed, he might decide for himself how he'd like to live the rest of his life. But until then, I'll stay by his side, come what may. Then he's a lucky boy. And not only because he'll have the best warrior this side of the belt to teach him the battle axe. <laughs> She'll do her best. Shula. The beast that threatened your home is tamed. The empire that threatened your people toppled. Might it not be time to cast off your ancestors' glamour and retake your place in the twins? Perhaps. It's not as if we have the crystals to maintain the wall much longer. But are we truly safe? Is the world truly ready to accept us for who we are? and what we believe. If I remember rightly, you and yours still choose to remain hidden, do you not? We do. Well, your people will always be welcome in Haven, regardless. As will yours in the hideaway. We're allies now. If there's anything you need from us, supplies, food, equipment, do not hesitate to ask. It's kind of you to offer, but we'll manage, just as we always have. Besides, I suspect you'll be needing everything at your disposal if you're going to save the world. <laughs> I fear much of it is past saving. The best we can do is strive to turn what's left into a world where we can all live as equals. A noble endeavor. And there'll be a place in this world for us, will there? For Walias. For everyone. I swear it. Then we shall be waiting. Until the tides bear you back to shore. Oh. Yeah, well, he has got a big brother now. certainly think of worse places to spend one's childhood. The moats of water are a fine people, and they will take good care of him. Up by the Vare, Ultima spoke to me. He called Leviathan his most profaned fragment, and told me to redeem the sins that had laid him low. Is that so? The sins of Walius's ancestors were grave indeed to force him to prime at so tender an age. And to freeze him in time. That he might never know what it was to live. Yet I doubt either of those crimes was the source of Ultima's displeasure. It was that the Icon's power had been put to another purpose than the one he intended. To him, the Viathan must have seemed an aberration. Could that be why Ultima made no attempt to lead me to him? The fear that this profaned fragment might corrupt his vessel somehow? Perhaps. Or perhaps he simply deemed Leviathan surplus to requirements. Having concluded that his vessel might be made to serve his purposes without the full sum of his power. His purposes? 
There's no escaping them. Even here, hidden away in the city of the blessing of the crystals proved nothing but a prison. A prison into which Wallius was born, and from which freedom is hard won. If the world doesn't change, if we don't change it, he'll end up suffering the same fate as every dominant who came before him. Then we must change it. That we must. And we shall. I don't need any more side quests. Yes, there is. God damn it. I was just joking. Only I was wondering if you might help me with something else. Don't tell me. Another unruly dominant. Not quite. But a dangerous foe nonetheless. It promises to be quite a hunt. All right. Tell me about our quarry. A fiendish, cold-blooded beast known as a Givra. Normally, we leave such animals well alone, and for good reason. But I have an even better reason to want its tongue. It, its tongue? If you'll permit me, Tributary, I can explain. Certainly, Yamila. It's been over a week since my sister gave birth to her first child, yet she still isn't back on her feet. We've tried everything to restore her spirits, physics and nostrums, the laying on of hands and of leeches, but all to no avail. The healers tell me there's only one hope left. A broth as potent as its ingredients are perilous to procure. It isn't only Yamila's sister who stands to benefit from this, by the way. There's her baby to think of, and Walias, too. She'd agreed to be his wet nurse, you see. I'd be glad to help. Thank you. Our hunters have no shortage of skill, but this task calls for more than that. And it won't be achieved through weight of numbers, either. The Giver is as wary a foe as it is a deadly one. Two hunters might catch it unawares, but any more than that, and it would pick up our scent a league away. Then it is decided. The two of you will go, while Jill and I occupy ourselves here. Perhaps we might help prepare the broth. I was going to say, could you uh, do some of these side quests for me? Most kind of you. Come then, Clive. The river of time flows fast, and so must we. There's a Givra that has claimed the ruins at the foot of the mountain as its hunting ground. But as I say, they are wary creatures. We'll need suitable bait to draw it out. The flesh of a forest ibex should suffice. To the forest, then. The last licks. <laughs> the name, hello. <laughs> Gavra loves more than a fat haunch of ibex. That speaks the voice of experience. Do you hunt often? Since I was a girl, my father would take me. Then after he returned to the sea, Yamila's father. Our families have always been close. Even if her sister wasn't Wallace's wet nurse, I couldn't stand by and watch her suffer. My lord, might I have a moment of your time? I would beg of you a service. Certainly. What is it? It's a long story. But before we get to that, would I be right in thinking Lady Shula told you about the Witch from the North? Yes. She said that your ancestors found her here, and that it was she who taught them the spell to stop time. She was like Wallius, you know. A dominant. The Warden of Ice. My great-grandmother suspected as much. She cared for the poor woman when the end was near. And it was she whose duty became to attend her grave. A duty that was passed down to me. I see. And the service you would beg of me? Well, until recently, the path to the grave had long been blocked by a fallen tree. But when our woodsmen finally found time to move it, we quickly realized it might have been better had they not. On trying to clear the rest of the path, you see, we discovered that a flock of bloodthirsty beasts had claimed the cliffs beyond. None of us was a match for them. 
But you, my lord, have proven your strength many times over. Would you drive them away for us? Bug. Of course. I'll see the path is made safe. Thank you, my lord. The grave is in a place called Witch Drop. To reach it, one must turn left at the Winged Wains, then follow the path around to the right, deep into the forest. Why so far from Haven? It was where she lived. When our ancestors first came to Missidia, they found her there, in an old abandoned village. And it was her heartfelt wish to return there in death. So when she passed away, my great-grandmother had a stone erected for her, on the cliffs overlooking the place she once called home. How thoughtful. Well then, no time like the present. Left at the ships, then round to the right, you said. Just so. Thank you once again, my lord. I will join you at the grave anon. I think I might have found a way to break Talor's curse. Go on. Well, after listening to the village elders and scouring every likely looking tomb in the library, I learned that not all Tombries are the same little green menaces we know and loathe. Apparently, a chosen few live to incredible ages and grow to many times the size of their counterparts. The folk tales hold that it's the very eldest of these, the Tombury kings, who weave the curses and that their magics bind their victims to them, that they might continue to feed on their pain. So if we slay the one that cast the curse, the feeding will cease. But that was my thinking, yes. Though I doubt it'll be easy. These kings are not just bigger, they're stronger too. And if the tales are true, their followers will defend them to the death. It is a perilous proposition, in short. But it may also be Talor's only hope. What say you? I'll do it. Even if killing this... king doesn't break the curse, the city will be a safer place for its removal. Thank you. So then, where will I find it? That, alas, I do not know. It must have woven the curse at the altar in Father's Fell, but as to where it is now... Fanet, you were the one asking about Tonbreeze, right? Because there's a whole bloody army of them out on the cloak! What? W but why would they stray so far? And why now? There's only one way to find out. I'll head up the mountain and see what's going on. <laughs> right. Thank you. And please, be careful. We're here! Please, mister, you've got to help us. The village is in danger, and if someone doesn't do something... Oh, you should have seen it! Stop. Take a deep breath, and tell me everything. Starting with your name. Sorry. My name's Eirik. When you went up to the air of hours with Miss Shula, I... Well... I followed you. You could have been killed. Lady Shula told us you lot were great warriors, so I thought I'd be all right if I stayed close, like. But then I lost track of you in the woods, and that's when I saw it. Saw what? A great, big, dripping, drooling monster. Spitting out great spots of water, it was, that were tearing up the ground and cutting down trees. Spouts of water. I don't recall saying anything like that in the forest. Well, I did. And I don't ever want to see it again. You'll get rid of it, won't you? All right. If this creature is as terrible as you claim, it could well pose a threat to the village. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, mister. I was over by the swift one that I saw it. Maybe it's still there. Then that's where I'll start my search. But this time, you're going to stay here. Understood. I wouldn't go through those gates for 10 hundred gil. Not with that thing out there. Good luck, though.
<laughs> Jesus, they weren't They're kidding. Almost at the gate, but they won't be coming any closer. Oh, that was easy. I should buy Haven some time at least. Clive, are you all right? Fine. We've taken care of the immediate threat. Oh, thank the tides. I was worried I was going to lose you both. Till all he, oh, he took a sudden turn for the worse just after you left. What? Is he? No, he's hanging on. I fear the Tombury King may have begun the cursing ritual again. In earnest this time. I can't imagine their being here as a coincidence. I think it might be happening on this very mountain. If it is, it won't be for long. Get back to Talor. I'm going up. My thanks. I shall pray for both of you. More of them. Come on then. I crave an audience with your king. Another group. They don't look very regal. Still no sign of the king. Could find it had been wrong. Ugh, there's dozens of them. The king must be close. Looks like that's the last of them. Out here, anyway. But beastmen do like dark places. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Oh, no rank. All right. It even has a crown. Sorry, Your Majesty, but your reign ends here. Okay.
Ow. See how Talor's doing. Clive! Is it done then? It is. I was going to ask if there had been any change in Talor's condition, but judging by that smile on your face, I think I already know the answer. You do? Talor! He's back! Thank you, my lord. I can never repay you for everything you've done for me. I owe you my life. I'm just glad the curse is lifted. There is... one thing I'd like to know, though. If you don't mind my asking. What made you seek the Tombury's help in the first place? Oh... that... Well, ah, you deserve to know. It was years ago now, back in my trading days. The sons of Grieger arrested me in Oriflam, chained me up in a lightless cell with a great sword hung over my head, ready to fall if I didn't confess. But they never said to what. I didn't, of course. So eventually they just let me go. And I never told a soul. Try to forget it ever happened. But then you came along and the sight of your sword brought it all flooding back. Sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't hardly breathe, and I, I thought that if I gave my old chain to the Tombries, maybe, maybe they could take all that pain away. All that anger. But it only made it worse. Oriflam has fallen. And the men who tortured you likely fell with it. <laughs> if only I'd known, I might have spared everyone a lot of trouble. I'd convinced myself that you were like them. That all outsiders were the same, but... You're not. Far from it. Thank you, son. Thank you. Something I need to tell you. After we parted ways on the path to the cloak, I went straight back to Talor and explained to him what you were doing on his behalf. And just like that, his pain began to fade. What do you mean, just like that? The Tombury King would have still been alive. I had to contend with dozens of his minions before I found him. Then. Perhaps one of them warned him of your coming and he broke off his ritual. Or perhaps... Perhaps knowing that an outsider was fighting for him was what lifted the weight from Talor's heart. I know from experience that many illnesses are not wholly physical, but of the spirit. At least in part. Was there ever really a curse then? was Talor simply suffering from the pain of his memories and the guilt of what he'd done. For all the difference it makes. I suppose we'll never know. Maybe not. But this much I do know. It was your strength and your selflessness that healed his heart in the end. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell my healer friend when I get home. <laughs> Where will we find them? Further in. Things will do nicely.
A bit overkill. Return to the sea, and to the clouds rise again. We have our bait then. What next? Next, we pay a visit to the Dark Gate to pick some local weed. It'll help disguise our scent. There should be a sprig or two of local weed growing somewhere around here. Look for the golden leaves. Is this it? Aye, that's the stuff. Crush the leaves between your fingertips and rub them on your clothes. Uh, if you insist. I expect to be covered in yellow. The smell. Like corruption, isn't it? We'll have an honor guard of flies before long. But it'll stop the Gavra from noticing us. Its nose will tell it we're nothing but a feast for worms. Oh, I feel so much better. We can wash it off afterwards. If there's one good thing about the Gavra choosing the ruins for its hunting ground, it's that there's plenty of fresh water nearby. Where should we lay the bait? Gavers are creatures of habit. Look for some sign of its passing. It's sure to return to the same place sooner or later. A bit of monster hunter. Locking his territory. Feel here. <clears throat> Something was. A curl, maybe. Tracks. But. I assume they're too small to belong to a Gavra. You're right. They're barely big enough to belong to a Gavra's breakfast. A fresh kill. But not a Gavra's. The wounds are too clean. Too small. These look like a predator's tracks. You can clearly make out the claws. And not just any claws. These belong to a Gavra. There's no mistaking them. Still no sign. Patience, Clive. Hunting's not something you can rush. Have you stalked these beasts before? Once. Gavras are fast, so the job called for a bearer. But even with my knack, it was a close-run thing. Not many leaders would take such risks for their people. Says the man who battled an icon to save a boy he barely knew. It is the way of the Mots of Water to use what gifts we've been given for the good of all. And I gather it's your way, too. It was Sid, the man whose name I bear. He fought for his people and their future with every fiber of his being. I'm just following in his footsteps. In many ways, you remind me of him. Me? You're confusing daring with desperation. Quiet. Something's coming. Oh. Our guest has finally arrived. Shall we greet him? It'd be rude not to. He still got one hit in, but that's okay. You weren't 
exaggerating when you said they were dangerous. They're forces of nature, all right. And with this one's passing, the river of life has calmed. Spirit run free in the open ocean. This flesh I claim that your gifts might rain down upon us this day and our river flow in spirit once more. Turn to the village. We must get this tongue to your miller before it spoils. Is that the hunter? Uh, it's you, uh, Nasif's savior. Are you all right? What happened? I was. Tracking an ibex when a great spout of water struck me square in the back. Sent me flying all the way across the clearing. Did you see what made it? No. All I heard was a noise. An ear-splitting din. Oh. Might this be the culprit? Leave him to us. Another one? You've caused enough trouble. <sighs> well, that wasn't too bad. Hardly a threat to the village, but you can't blame the boy for being scared. <laughs> you made that look a lot easier than it was. Do you think that was the beast which attacked you? That thing? Not a chance. Would have heard it coming a league away. And the blast of water that hit me was beyond anything an Archelon can manage. Oh. A boy from the village sent me in search of a beast that could conjure such things, but... That's it. That's the noise I heard. Sounded like it came from the ruins. I'll go. You head back to Haven and see a healer. What do we have here? A lot of dead things. Found that. Something's been busy. Whatever this creature is, it's out for blood. But it's not having ours. Stay close, Toggle. Where are you? Hmm.
last of them. Either way, I should let Irik know the danger is past. For now at least. This should be the path to Witch Drop. Hungry Toggle. And here's our welcoming party. Looks like that's the last of them. Now, where's the grave? This must be it. My lord. Thank you for making the path safe again. He's a... Was that her name? Yes. Hardly the most fitting tribute for a dominant, is it? A rough-hewn stone with naught but a given name engraved on it. But my ancestors had only been here a matter of weeks when she passed. Every day was a struggle to survive. They had neither the time nor the energy to devote to a more elaborate memorial. Yet they spared what they could to grant her wish, that even in death she might continue to watch over her home. She lived down there, then? In the ruins. That's right. They were once the living quarters for those who served up in the temple. When the Northern Thanes sent her here to weave her spell, this was where she and her retinue stayed. There were priests, handmaidens, and a knight sworn to shield her from harm. <clears throat> of course, they were all gone by the time my ancestors arrived, fled or dead in the Western Wars. All except his A. Who remained till the end. Alone. Indeed. At least, that is the story as it's been handed down in Haven. But there is an epilogue to the tale. One known only to Lady Shula and myself. Some years after Issei's passing, you see, my grandmother came here to tend the grave, and found a stranger kneeling before it. A knight, dressed. She asked of him who he was and whence he had come, but received no answer. The only words he spoke were, Tell me true, whose grave is this? So she told him of how her people had met and cared for Issei, and how she had died. His only reaction was to stare up at the air of hours in silence. Then he left never to be seen again. You said he was wearing plate. Was it black and gold? Do you know something of him? When we went up to the Air of Hours to unravel the spell, we were set upon by a shade in the shape of a knight in full plate. It manifested in front of the Vare, and in its ether, I felt Shiva. The witch. You think this may have been the same man my great-grandmother met? He says night. I don't know. Maybe. All I can say for sure is it was intent on protecting her creation. Or perhaps her spirit. What remained of her ether, preserved in the Vare. Perhaps... His spirit, too, became unraveled in her spell, frozen in an eternal vigil. Till we ended it. If the shade you fought was Issei's knight, then ending it was the greatest gift you could have given him. Now he can return to the sea, to be with his lady once more. And if his spirit should ever return here to visit her grave, I shall ask his name, that I might carve it in the stone next to hers. That they might be together, once and for all. What a badass night. We have to tell you. You're back! So? 
Did you find the fiend that attacked me in Young Irik here? I did. It won't be troubling you anymore. Yes! I knew you'd get it. Only because you warned me of its existence. Not that you should ever have learned of its existence, but... All's well that ends well, I suppose. What was it, anyway? The manifestation of Leviathan's power. When we visited Wallius in the Surge, he was... angry and afraid. The Icon summoned these creatures for his protection. Though why one would be wandering the ruins of Riversmeet, I don't know. Maybe it was looking for his mom. That's where she died, isn't it? The Falls. The Falls? Aye. When they took her baby, she threw herself off the top. We go there once a year to pay our respects. The whole village. Hmm. An eggy is a part of its master's spirit, but... Wallius wouldn't have been aware of what had happened to his mother, would he? Well, either way, you did us a favor putting that thing to rest. Us and Wallius. Thank you. Aye. Thanks, mister. Did all proceed as planned? It did. Here. Yeah. One giver tongue, as promised. Oh, thank you. I shall add it to the broth at once. By your leave, tributary. If there is anything else that we can do to help, you need only ask. Oh, no, no. You've already done more for my family than I can ever repay. Just as you have, Clive, for my family. I only regret that I have nothing to offer you in return but my gratitude. It's more than enough. Besides, I'm no less grateful to you. For what? For welcoming my friends and I into your midst. For showing us how your people live. For reminding me that the world we strive to create where bearers can live alongside their fellow men in peace and comfort is no mere fantasy. I'd hardly call it comfort. Every day is a struggle. Though we do at least struggle together, it's true. As must we all. I only ask that you remember the cost of using your gifts as a bearer. I know that you feel it's your duty to do whatever you can to help your people. But you have a child to think about now. And Wallace has lost enough. I shall bear that in mind. That's all I ask. Oh, and if there is anything else that we can do to help, well, you know. Thank you. Truly. Oh. The end can wait. It can't wait much longer. It is gave me another thing. No. It has to be him. What has to be who? If you uh, don't mind my asking. It's not your asking, I mind. It's my explaining. But I don't see any other way around it. You see, when a baby is born here, we hold a ceremony to welcome them. The rite of immersion, we call it. But I don't know whether Wallius was ever afforded that courtesy. What is abundantly clear, though, is that my ancestors never welcomed him as one of us. And I want to change that. The problem is, the ceremony requires three ministrators. The baby's parents and a witness. 
As tributary, the role of witness would normally fall to me. But being Wallace's closest living relative, I must play the role of mother. So you want me to serve as witness in your stead? That's right. A witness must be a trusty guardian, ready to steer the child through the stormy waters of life and on to tranquility, which is why I thought of you. It would be my honor. Thank you, Clive. So, if you will serve as mother and I as witness, who will take on the father's role? I have a younger brother. He should be making ready for the ride as we speak, though whether he is or not. <sighs> Let me introduce you. You have a brother. Please okay. do. If he's anything like his sister, I'm sure we'll get on famously. I'll bid him come to the Witten Hall. Will you wait for us there? Gladly. Clive, my brother. Why are you say with such disdain? If it isn't my old maid, Sid! Oh, you mother! You! Fuck! So you do remember me! Even stripped of my cunning disguise? I'm touched. You two know each other. My friends and I crossed paths with your brother on our hunt for the Dusk Crystals. During which we saved his life. Three times, was it? Three? Four? Who's counting? All I know is when Shula mentioned she'd called in Sid the Outlaw to help young Walias, I could be sure that the little rascal was in safe hands. I mean, having seen you in action back at the tower, I know exactly what you're capable of. So the mercenary you met in the Sage Spire, that was Clive. And he saved your life. That's a rather different story from the one you told me. And a far likelier one at that. It would appear my family owe you twice over. Whether they admit it or not. Honestly, Fammy, would it kill you to tell the truth once in a while? What? I said sorry, didn't I? How about we save the uh, recriminations until after the ceremony, eh? Speaking of which... I see why she says her brother in such disdain. It's simple, really. We each say a short prayer and anoint the child's head with holy water. Nothing too onerous, then? Not about the rite itself, no. But it does call for some preparation. <coughs> One of the witnesses' responsibilities is to collect the holy water, you see. Three files for the three ministrators, each taken from a particular place. Don't worry, though. It's not as if you have to go alone. I can show you the way. I'd appreciate that. Famiel, you stay here and ready the Witten Hall. Leave it to me. If there's anything Jill and I can do to assist you... We'd be glad to help. Thank you both. All right then, let's get started, shall we? There are three types of holy water that we must collect. The water of the mountain, of the river, and of the sea. We take the water of the mountain from the spring atop Maiden's March. The water of the river from the course that flows through the ruins of River's Meat. And the water of the sea from the shallows of Tailwind Bay. Here are the files we'll be using in the ceremony. I'm ready to leave whenever you are. Stay back! I'm warning you! Someone's in trouble. Come on. This sounds familiar. Ah, the two stooges. Uh, missing the third stooge. Help! Help? What help? Nobody's coming to... Help? We're here to help. Keep its attention on us. Is 
anyone hurt. Oh, Sid! Thank all the clouds in the heavens you came! You saved us! Again! Would you two care to explain what you're doing up here? The chief sent us. To fetch incense for the ceremony. So the Witten Hall smells nice. For the little Ben. <clears throat> you mean to tell me you braved this sap? You don't have to do everything he says, you know. Or if you must, at least have the good sense to ask one of our hunters to accompany you. We're sorry. It's fine. Just go back to the village before you get yourselves into any more trouble. Right you are. Oh, and there. Uh, thanks and that. Remind me to give my brother a cuff round the ear when we get back. I wonder what would have happened if I did this out Let's of order. This water, shall we? The rain that falls on the mountain emerges here in these springs. The source of the river. The source of life. Precisely. Take care not to spill it. Right. Let's save that for the ceremony. We can collect the water of the river from here. All right. You deserve a rest. The water of the river represents life. It is constantly moving, constantly changing. And though its course may twist and turn or branch into a thousand separate streams, it always flows in the same direction, from source to sea, beginning to end. Like time. What of Wallius then? When your ancestors froze him, did they remove him from the River of Life? They did. Like an ice-bound pool that didn't thaw for eighty summers. But now he's free to flow again. To live. And you and I shall flow with him. For we are all but drops of water in the great river of life. I find that thought oddly reassuring. Go on. A drop of water might seem insignificant on its own. But as a part of a torrent, it can cleave a path through the hardest rock. It makes me believe we humans might just stand a chance. I believe we might. One more file to go then. Nearly done. This path I completely down to the missed coast. it. Usually we keep this gate shut tight. But since mm -hmm. this is a special occasion. Thank the tides, the weather held. This place can be treacherous when the waves are high. If it weren't for the holy water, no one would ever come down here. I'll be sure to watch my step. Water flows to the sea, then rises into the clouds. Just like life, the end is not the end, only a new beginning. My ancestors chose this place because it was where the first boat landed. And it's a good thing they didn't land closer to the surge. Quite. The water 
of the sea. I still can't help but be awed by it. Oh? All that wave ever made me feel was pity and sorrow for the innocent life trapped inside it. The child my great-grandfather sacrificed to try to change his people's fate. It was wrong. An unforgivable sin. But I often wonder, will my descendants ever forgive me for what I have done? As tributary, I faced many difficult choices. And though I've always striven to do what's best for my people, here we live in poverty, hidden away from the world. So have my choices denied them a better life, just as my ancestors denied Walius his. No. You would not forcibly sacrifice one of your people to save the others. You do the best you can for all of them, as do I. We share in their woes, just as we share in their joys. And the most we can do is try to bring them more of the latter. Aye, you're right. And try I shall to bring all of my people a better tomorrow. Walius included. <laughs> then I wish you luck. If my time with the boy is any indication, he's going to be quite a handful. <laughs> then we must start as we mean to go on and give him the very best welcome we can. Where to next, then? Back to the village to find out if my brother has made the necessary preparations. Or got his lackeys to do it for him. We have the holy water. Is everything else in place? All ready to go. Told you you could count on me. Then let us begin. Famiel, have your men summon everyone to the Witten Hall. Right you are. Uh, Shula, wait. I don't know the words. Don't worry. There aren't many of them. We'll have time enough to practice before people arrive. <laughs> oh, look at that baby. My friends, we are gathered here today to welcome this child into our community by the right of immersion, as has been our custom since the first reign. As tributary, I would normally perform the rite with the child's parents, but Walius's mother and father returned to the sea long ago. So I and my brother Famiel shall serve as his family while the one who returned him to us shall bear witness in my stead. Clive, if you would step forward. Like the rain that falls on the mountains tall, are we born? <laughs> like the river that flows through the valleys below, do we live? Like the boundless sea, where the currents run free, do we die? 
and to the clouds then rise again. The circle of water is the circle of life, and today, from the heavens, falls rain anew. This child, Walias, now joins our stream, and he shall flow with us from the mountains to the sea. <sighs> you played your part to a T, Clive. Thank you. It means a lot to us. I was honored to be asked. And terrified I'd miss. <laughs> now that you're part of the family, young Walyas, my lad. Uncle Samuel can teach you the ways of the world. <laughs> oh no, he can't. Eh? <laughs> Don't be so hasty. Your brother's knack for self-preservation might serve him well. Ha! You are never going to let me live that down, are you? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm going to raise Walius as if he were my own. Teach him everything I know. About life, our people, and our past. But with all the mother crystals gone, he will grow up in a world without comforts. One where we only have ourselves and each other to rely on. I'd say your people are better prepared than most to survive in such a world, Shula. To thrive, indeed. Under your guidance. Only if nature continues to smile on us. If we were to lose her gifts, we'd be left with nothing at all. Yes. But it needn't come to that. Not if we can stop the spread of the blight. So long as we can save a single patch of soil, we can plant the seeds for a new world. One where we can all be free. Perhaps then, we might finally be able to step out from behind our curtain, eh? Till that day comes, I wish you good tide. Thank you. We should be on our way. Well, you be careful out there. Hi, you steer clear of trouble now. <laughs> Likewise. <clears throat> and there we go. Outsiders to have witnessed that right in over a century. Walius has been waiting for it for nearly as long. He seemed pleased to be finally rejoining the family. Now all we have to do is save that family. To change our river's course. All right, we're going to end it here. If you enjoyed... Shush, I'm trying to talk. There's no other quest, right? No other side quest. I'm begging you. Thank God all we have left is this. Which will look. If you enjoyed this, even though there's. I. Sorry, I was. I'm sick. So. I wasn't quite as talkative. Hopefully that'll change tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, 
please follow on Twitch, like and subscribe on YouTube, leave a comment down below, tell me all about your thoughts, uh, share with your friends, uh, family, and I will see you another day. Have a good night, good, uh, good night, good afternoon, good morning. Good f good noon, whatever the f uh, whatever the fourth part of the day is. Have a good night. Bye.